I'm uh, Mike Levin. I'm Douglas Dillard. I'm Alfred Pehab. I'm John Schaffner. I was born in a small old village in Nebraska. I see you found. I'm a product of the age of depression. Box of my things. Infantry, tanks, and smoldering airplane wings. I found myself on the, uh, on the high seas. Headed for Battle of the Bulge. These old pictures are cool. Tell me some stories. Was it like the old war movies? Sit down, son. Let me fill you it's in. Early morning of the 16th, when the shelling began. Where to begin? Let's start with the end. This black and white photo. Don't capture the skin. You can see hundreds of Germans. From the flash of a gun to a soldier who's done. Trust me, grandson, the war was in color. I was an only child. I, uh, of course, turned 18 and registered for the draft. That was about the only way you could join up in, in those days. I was out of high school two weeks when I was uh, called in. I think it was rough on my uh, parents. Everybody had uh, the same thing on their mind, and that was uh, join up with something and get it over with as soon as possible. How could these dirty names bring themselves to do this to us, you know? But the biggest thing, you know, the country had its problems. They had isolationists and all that. Yeah. It became one. This country became one mass of people, all with the same dedication of it winning the war. It did that. And that was, that was, that was something. So uh, we're green as grass, right? We get off the train at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. We got our uniforms by then. And we're marched down to Battery Street and uh, assigned to barracks. And that was all. Uh, just throw your stuffle bags on a bunk and that's your bunk. Well, uh, we didn't see anything the rest of that day, but that night we went to bed and when we woke up in the morning, this is in first of March, it's pretty cold. And it was raining cats and dogs and the wind was blowing the rain up against the barracks and the sheets. And I looked out the window and I thought, well, with the weather like this, we won't be doing much today. Yeah. Well, next thing you know, the sergeant comes in and rattles the garbage can <laughs> and says, everybody out the street for roll call. <laughs> and we walked out into the street with our raincoat and helmet liners and, wow. and we stood there in a driving rain and answered roll call. And I knew then that weather was never going to be a factor. When I first joined the 106th Division, uh, I heard that it was a motorized division. And uh, we went out uh, marching around Fort Jackson and looked at the motor pools, and there was hundreds of trucks in there. Hundreds. I thought, man, this is great. We won't have to be marching. <laughs> Guess what? We never did get in those trucks for about six months. <laughs> I got into the uh, got into the army in '42. Mm -hmm. Spent a year uh, as an enlisted man up in the Arctic in Greenland at a forlorn, cold place called Bluey West Eight. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then they sent me back to Fort Sill, Oklahoma, where I was commissioned in the field artillery mm -hmm. and. Uh, before very long, I found myself on the uh, uh, on the high seas, headed for Belgium, the Battle of the Bulge. Mike, that had to be the Queen Elizabeth. The Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, yes, I, I was uh, one of the loading officers <clears throat> on the ship. Uh, we had two gangways, 
on my gangway, we loaded 7,500, and on the other gangway, we loaded 7,500. That scared me to have 15,000 men on one ship crossing the Atlantic full of German submarines. I didn't care for that idea. You know, you talk about a ship being torpedoed. The, uh, the SS Dorchester, yeah. I believe, was the ship that was torpedoed. It's the one that had the four chaplains that yes. held yeah. their hands and went down together. Well, you know, those four chaplains uh, that went down with the ship had life preservers, and they gave them to four yeah, they stayed young on people yes. that didn't have any. That's right. Well, I can tell you guys about our convoy that was a type in the Mediterranean, but going back to the beginning, uh, my story is a little different from the rest of you being a, a, a juvenile teenager. I'm a product of the, age, the Depression period, and things were pretty rough uh, in Georgia. At that time, my family really suffered during those days, and I think it had a lasting impression on our rather conservative attitude uh, for the future. And uh, then when the war broke out, as I said, I could hardly wait to go, so I pressured my mother into letting me enlist. Well, after I uh, enlisted, I was uh, sent to Camp Walters, Texas and, uh, in July. I enlisted on the 3rd of July, 1942. And I got there just in time to start that summer cycle of training. And uh, it was really, really torturous. At that point, we had to, to take a physical uh, uh, training exercise to go in the airborne so you had to learn to do tumbles and front flips and a hundred push-ups and, and how that, many oh at least a hundred because the uh, the instructor there said we're here to 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 make an opinion as whether you're determined to accomplish something because if you're going in the paratroops we got to know you're going to be determined to finish your mission so they would stand there and count, and you, you, you may have a slight break, but you had to do it. And by the time we finished, uh, and the guy came over and said, congratulations, you passed. It was great relief, but you're exhausted. Because a lot of people didn't make it, they gave up. Yeah. I saw two movies when I was a young fellow. The Charge of the Light Brigade with yep. Errol Flynn yeah. and the lives of Bengal Lancer, and I decided I wanted to be in the cavalry. France had succumbed to the German attacks. Uh, this General de Gaulle got over to England and started the Free French Movement. I heard about it and found out he had a man in uh, New York representing him, and I went there and spoke to Jacques de Cie and volunteered. I got up to Montreal the next day to go to Halifax. A good friend of the family showed up and I jumped up and, what are you doing here? She said, your father found out about this escapade of yours and I'm to take you home. I said, oh no, I'm a lieutenant now. And she said, oh no, he spoke to De CA. So I went back and enlisted and uh, for the cavalry and uh, I went through basic training at Fort Knox. The commission they gave was infantry, parenthesis armor. And the night before graduation, I went up to the commandant and told him I couldn't accept an infantry commission. Uh, that our, my family had been horsemen, not for generations, but for centuries. And uh, I just couldn't do it. Next morning, my commission read cavalry. It's a good thing they didn't put me in the cavalry. I only knew two things about horses. One end bites and the other end kicks. <laughs> what was so interesting to me was meeting people from all over the country all of a sudden. I led sort of a sheltered existence as far as the group go. And here were people coming from Montana. I never thought of Montana. All over the country. Where to begin? Let's start with the end This black and white photo Don't capture the skin
from the flash of a gun to a soldier who's done. Trust me, grandson, the war was in color.